Hey folks, I got a little bit lucky when I was shopping for some 45 ACP ammo the other day and I found Winchester Ranger. You know, I've heard a lot of things about this uh, particular bullet, this particular load for a number of years. I've never been able to get a hold of it, never been able to shoot it. It is a standard 230 grain ammo, obviously made by Winchester. 45 ACP. I'm going to shoot that with my H&K 45 Tactical. And the way I'm going to test this bullet is what we call our Pack t test. That is precision, accuracy, and consistency. That all comes from shooting off the bench at a target 15 yards away. Precision is the extreme spread of that five-shot group. Accuracy is the score on that bullseye target for that same five shot group. Consistency is the standard deviation of muzzle velocities for that same five shot group. For the fun of it, I'm also going to be using my um, Mantis X10 recoil meter to see how this particular round recoils, or the recoil felt recoil impulse, compared to a standard 115 grain 9 millimeter. I think we're all very accustomed to shooting that. It's a good way to make a comparison. So that kind of lays the groundwork. Terminal performance is shot from seven yards into a clear ballistic ballistic gelatin. This is 20% NATO block. We're going to see how this bullet performs through a soft barrier. safe. Well, we got all five rounds recorded. I believe it got all five. Let's take a look. Twelve and a half feet per second. It looks like twelve and a half. A little bit of glare here. Uh, standard deviation. Looks like they all shot a little bit high, which is very similar to what it was looking like when I shot offhand. And using the Mantis X10 recoil meter, they looked like they were shooting a little bit high offhand, but they did look like they did group pretty darn nicely. Well, all right, let's shift it over. One shot, seven yards, 20% NATO, clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin. That's the Winchester Ranger, penetrated completely through the first gel block that's 16 inches long and ended up in the second gel block just at about, now I'm calling this a field estimation, about 18 and a half inches. We're going to go ahead and get this bullet pulled out. I'll get an exact measurement first of all, then I'll get it pulled out. We'll weigh it, score it, and I hope you stick around to see how this bullet fares in our full pack t test scoring. I was pretty excited to test this Winchester Ranger ammo, especially this T-series stuff. You know the Ranger ammo comes in three different varieties. One is called Ranger 1, another is the Ranger Bonded, and the third is the Ranger T-series, which I think uh, is in, to indicate it is for threat-stopping performance. That's the T, threat-stopping performance performance. But as it turns out, this bullet, like so many that I've tested this season, didn't really perform that well. The bullet failed to expand because it clogged. That jacketed hollow point, the hollow point, 
clogged and did not expand, as you saw, or as, as we figured, when we're out there at the range. But as a reminder, that doesn't mean that this is not lethal ammo, because, oh, that bad guy will be certainly perforated by this big 45 230 grain bullet. That's kind of a traditional weight for the 45 ACP. However, its lethality is diminished because it didn't expand. Let's go ahead and take a look at all the results that we gathered from uh, today's uh, event out at the range. We'll start with the precision accuracy from this bullseye target and the five shot group that we recorded with the lab radar chronograph. Precision, hey, pretty darn good, 1.098 of an inch or 1.1 of an inch extreme spread. An accuracy score, not too good. It shot quite high, 19 points out of a possible 50. But this ammo, or my HK45 tactical, I should say, is not zeroed for this Ranger ammo. If I had done that, the score, bullseye score, would have been much, much better. And if I had decided, or if we decide to carry this, obviously, I would take the time to zero it. And so it actually did shoot pretty darn well, just a little bit over a one inch group uh, at that 15 yards. We did record all five of those muzzle velocities, giving us an average muzzle velocity of 931 feet per second, with only 12 feet per second standard deviation. That's pretty darn good for factory handgun ammo. Looking now at the Mantis X10 recoil meter results, again, I shot five shots, and the results there was a one second, perfect one second of recovery time that compares very, very well to our standard CCI Blazer Brass 115 grain full metal jacket for the 9 millimeter Luger. Muzzle rise, however, quite a bit more, about 23 degrees muzzle rise compared to about 19 degrees muzzle rise for that standard. You know, I shot uh, quite a number of rounds on that day and uh, uh, my hand, for some reason, my finger right here, this trigger finger on the bottom of the trigger finger was really feeling it by the time I had got this done. So, um, shootable, yes. Um, you're gonna have to practice with this thing to get comfortable with the recoil, which is kind of the case for all these 45 ACPs. It's gonna take more practice on your part to become proficient at managing that recoil in comparison to a nine millimeter Luger. Now let's take a look at the terminal performance results. That was that one shot, fired into the 20% clear ballistic ballistic gelatin from a distance of seven yards. And this again, remember, was a soft barrier test. First of all, take a look at this. Look at the left side of this photo, and I got really lucky. I caught the bullet coming into the gel block, and I call this photo, here it comes. And then when it struck the gel block, passed entirely through the first 16 inch gel block and into the second gel block. All of these are 20% NATO uh, gel blocks. We don't see much of a transient cavitation channel or temporary wound channel at all. In fact, what we see here uh, all happened kind of late in the uh, bullet's path through that first gel block at about eight or nine inches into the gel block, uh, ending up at about maybe 14 inches, um, but doesn't look really too impressive. Sort of, I would maybe say, anemic temporary wound channel. Penetration is 18 and three quarters of an inch, 18.75 inches. And what's interesting is according to Winchester's website for this particular, well, all of the different Ranger ammo, the bullet should have penetrated only 11.9 inches. And I actually think that's probably out of a, or into a 10% FBI gel block. That is their assessment though, by the way, for a heavy cloth barrier. And the bullet should have looked like this. 
However, what we saw was absolutely no expansion at all, which compares much more closely to what Winchester says is their steel barrier test. 21 inches of penetration. Remember, we got about 19 inches of penetration. And obviously then we see a nice retained weight of 100%, all 230 grains were retained. And like Winchester saw with their steel barrier test, that bullet did not expand. However, this was a soft barrier test. It's only a couple layers of canvas, a thin layer, 1 16th of an inch of leather, a little bit more of that canvas, and it clogged that bullet up. Now, that's not too unusual, as I'm finding out, because so many, so many of the bullets that I've tested this year with various different types of soft barriers end up clogging. The retained length of this bullet, well, it looks pretty darn good, 0.658 of an inch. So it's gonna drive straight into that target, and of course it did. It did drive very, very straight, very, very deep. Ended up with a final score of 192.5 points. That's not too bad, but you gotta understand that's out of a possible 500 points. And we've seen numerous 45 ACP bullets scoring into the 400 point range um, in, in, in and also including through some soft barriers. In fact, the Federal HST 45 ACP we've tested previously scored so, so well. You might be interested in taking a look at that video. If you're interested in that or any of the other uh, pack t tests we've done over the years, take a look at the playlist link that's put into the description below. Well, what do you think? You may have some comments, some experience, some observations about what we did today, or maybe some personal observations with the same bullet or similar bullets. Go ahead and post those in the comment section below. I'm sure others in the community would like to see that. And thank you very much for watching.